Howdy folks, Text Grabbing here with Tex Grabbing and Outdoors. I hope you guys are ready for your Tex Grabbing and Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness because I have been to the ATA show, I have come back, and we've been working really hard on this video trying to get everything real fancy and such. Thank God for my producer. If you want to make it weird, you can go to TexGrabbingAndOutdoors.com. Because this is a very traditional archery oriented approach to the ATA show, a lot of the products that you're probably going to encounter in this video are going to be available at ThreeRiversArchery.com. So if you see something interesting, check out Three Rivers, see if they stock it, and you can use the discount code of TexGrebner in your checkout and get free shipping. So I hope that you guys are going to enjoy watching this Tex Grebner Outdoors Misadventure to the ATA show. Howdy folks, Tex Grebner here with Tex Grebner Outdoors. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky at the Archery Trade Association show for 2019. We're here to make it weird, have a little bit of fun, do a little bit of partying, meet people, rub elbows, and I'm going to do my absolute best to show you guys the kind of products that I'm interested in that I feel like might interest you. And we'll see how it all works out. This is Tex Grebner Outdoors after all, so the only thing that you can count on is stuff not going right, so we'll see how this all works out. Wiley Coyote is my spirit animal, but it is dangerous to release too much of my awesomeness all at once. I am here at the Archery Trade Association show in Louisville, Kentucky. Getting all fancy this year. I've got new wireless microphones. And this is basically like a redneck comic con. It is the place to see and be seen. But this is also Tex Grebner Outdoors. So it started out the morning as a comedy of errors because we missed the shuttle and had to pay for parking anyways. But it's a tax write-off. Depreciation of wealth. So stay tuned. Oh look, shiny stuff. I could never have this bow because it would be, it would gain character so rapidly from getting scratched up by the multiflora rose bushes. This is way too pretty of a bow for me. I could never own this bow and keep it nice. This down here is a little bit more my style, something that I wouldn't necessarily have to care about. Now, everybody always says that Fred Bear wore plaid, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. The fact that Fred Bear was wearing plaid, it was wool plaid. It was not the Walmart faded glory flannel. It was wool plaid. Now while I'm talking about Papa Bear here, God only ever made two bad motherfuckers when it came to modern bow hunting. One of them was Fred Bear. He could hunt mountain sheep while smoking a pipe. We ain't found the other one yet, so it might not be a bad idea for the rest of us to do a little bit of working out and improve our quality of life. There's nothing wrong with a 45 pound draw, but it does literally feel like a toy by comparison to my normal draws. It's very hard to argue with the fact that bear recurve bows are a classic of the industry. It's not my chosen brand, but as I say over and over again amongst all this fancy shiny shit, it's already obsolete. It's never out of style. About the only thing that changes with traditional archery is limb cores and the wood in the risers. So I've got a fledgling trad life archer here. Yeah. This is Luke Cadillo and he has a TV show, and so you can tell us a little bit about it. We talk a lot on social media, and yep. he's also a fledgling spear hunter. Yep. So talk about what you got going on and like the awesomeness that is you. Yeah, you know, so 100%, we just try to keep it real. Uh, 
I'm a former UFC fighter, um, and now I'm a coach. I take out other uh, UFC fighters out in the woods and kind of break them down and try to teach them some of them how to hunt and some of them how to fish, and you know. So we just we we're no we're not professionals by all means, but uh, we love to do it and we have we have fun doing it, you know. Yeah, and the show is Gladiators Unleashed. That's right. If you follow Aaron Snyder on Instagram and Kafaru Cast, you can also see Luke here shooting 3D. Yep. And a friend of mine introduced us a couple years ago at the ATA, uh, Phil Mendoza of No Limits Archery in Denver. Yep. And we basically just kept in touch. And at some point, no striking, at some point, the next time I'm out there, we should wrestle. Oh, heck yeah. Just, just catch can, yep. no butt scooting, though. <laughs> that sounds just good. back off the mat, because yep. it would just be hilarious yep. to see me get annihilated. Yeah. You've been working out, though. I yeah, I've been working out. But How do you? You've been doing that, motivating. See, right there. Get, yeah, got to get. Yep. It's good to see people at ATA like yourself. We all get together. And and collaborate again and good seeing you wear the good camo i like you know so it's good man i'm glad i'm i'm, I'm happy for you on your stuff that you're doing oh i'm happy for you too and, and i want to see you get something with that spear i sent I you yeah so starting the next outdoor that. scandal yeah. well hopefully we get down to texas here this, this this winter and you know spring so hopefully i get one right below me well the good news is there's somebody on YouTube that's got plenty of videos, hey, and back. not necessarily Tim Wells. You still haven't got to shoot my 100-pound recurve. No, I can't pull that bitch back. There's no way in hell I'm pulling that bitch back. <laughs> oh, you can get it back once. Yeah. And then you'd never shoot again. Exactly. Thanks, exactly. Luke. Here I am with Dan Staten from Elk Shape, and he's going to tell you guys a little bit about what he does and a little bit about himself, because I know of him. This is the first time I've ever met him in person, but here he is at the ATA show, Elk Shape. Yep, tech, thanks, appreciate it. Uh, so this guy sends me his workouts uh, on Instagram, and I, I definitely see him. Uh, I, people like him are what inspire me, people that just work hard towards their goals. And so we created Elk Shape to kind of basically help people with their lifestyle and help people uh, shorten the elk hunting learning curve and help people just uh, know that they need to work hard and they're gonna have to earn anything that they want through some sweat and discipline and delayed gratification. So Elk Shape's just a lifestyle brand. Shorten the elk hunting learning curve. Have you killed an elk? Me? Yeah. I'm a Midwestern whitetail hunter, know, you remember that. But it's intimidating, right, to come elk hunting. So anyone can kill an elk, anyone can come out, eat, uh, come out west and can do it. It's just, you know, it's gonna take some work and Oh, You've got to show up physically prepared. Yeah, it is a lot the of it. As well. You've got to be mentally tough. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, the physical is one thing, but the mental is everything. And it's between I've, the ears. Personally, I have found that you get physical, you get mental toughness through your ability to endure physical suffering. 100%. Because you can't become physically strong unless you have the discipline to train yourself. And when you get to the point where you are trained to be able to fight through that is what breeds mental toughness. I've been there. I've been out there, done the Train to Hunt Nationals oh, with nice. Kenton. Nice. And so I've been there at altitude. And I tell you what, I've climbed a mountain when it was 102 degrees outside at a national for Train to Hunt. Yeah. That is easier than sitting in a tree stand for six hours when it's negative 30. I believe that, yeah. And it's all between the ears, all that stuff that we want, all the success, it's uh, between the ears. But guys, this guy's the real deal. Thanks for uh, having me on. And, and how can they find you on social media just and your up, YouTube? Just look up Elk Shape. Either you'll find any of that. We are in the, okay, Primo's. I believe that this is a double bull. I better just, yes. Let me just be a professional and check the box. Okay, so this is a double bull stakeout blind. Lately, I've given up on hunting out of tree stands and started to go for more of a ground blind style setup because some plans are just dumb enough to work. And this just seems like 
exactly what I'm looking for to put under the boughs of that pine tree to kind of break me up just a little bit more and also be able to sit on the tree itself and then shoot. I think that this, for my ground setups on my trees, I think that this would just be bitchin' good. Yeah, that is so cool. And at least it comes like this from the factory instead of me cutting a perfectly good blind apart. I'm TJ Faulkner from 30-06 Outdoors, also with uh, Native Ground Blinds. What we got here is the Yuma Ground Blind. It's a uh, portable, portable blind. It's good for running gun style hunting. What it is, it's only five pounds. You can move it any way that you want to. The walls will actually come out. You can make it a wall. You can make it fully enclosed. It's however you want to. It's great for bow hunters, great for traditional bow hunters, great for guys hunting with shotgun, uh, turkey, geese, ducks, uh, what have you. The windows, there's no uh, Velcro, no zippers. It just uses the cord that just slides over the button. Just like that. The material that it comes with is uh, 600D. It's got the uh, holders in it that you can uh, put brush in. It's got the uh, shoot-through mesh, great for fixed heads. On the inside, it's got the uh, pockets so that you can put uh, drinks in it, you can put cell phones in it, accessories, put camera accessories in there. It's got it on both sides. It does have the hub style uh, pop-up, so you pop it up, and close it, it comes down 10 seconds, you pop it up 10 seconds, either way. So, like I said, you can fully enclose it however you want to, or you can make it just a straight wall. Uh, it's great for blending in. There's no straight line, so it breaks your pattern up pretty well. Retails for $149 in the store, and that's pretty much it. This is the October Mountain booth. Ascent recurve. We are in the under $100 price point here. Let's see what this is marked at. 40 pounds, under $100. I imagine that it would work. I mean, granted, it's only a 15 pound draw weight, so not exactly my style. But if I'd had that as a kid in green, I'd have been happier than a pig in shit. But I feel that I developed much more character by having a little red Indian that was so old that it had turned yellow. Steady. <laughs> Is an occasion when Tex Grebner shoots a Matthews. It's super quiet though. Like, I'm pleasantly surprised. See, it's always nice when I actually look like I know what I'm doing. You're not gonna believe me when I say that I actually do like Matthews as a bow company. And I do like Matthew's bows. It's just that I came onto social media in an age where every rich kid's daddy that didn't have to work bought a Matthew's bow, and I couldn't afford one back in the day. I've always said that a bow that's built right, you see how this is sitting in my hand right now? It doesn't have any extra fancy shit on it. It's just got a drop away rest. It's sitting right there in my hand. That's all it needs. Because after all, it's not like I haven't shot out to 70 yards with a bare compound to begin with, with no sights and fingers. So it's like, you don't need extra shit unless you go hang another extra shit off of it. And then you have to end up balancing it out. And by the time that you're done, you've got a 15 pound bow. I still can't believe I'm saying it, but I do really like it. Yeah, I like it. I never didn't like it. I was bailing hay and shooting a Martin Lynx 10 years after the fact that the Lynx was old news. Can I get a picture with you real quick? Me? And I slid one into the other. Traditional bow hunter? Yep. I dabble in primitive skills with the cold steel spears. Okay very interested in the Adelaide. So this is a Carbon Express Adelaide. 
and they've basically reinvented the wheel with something that predates the invention of the wheel, but it also kind of takes away, in my opinion, the barrier to entry if you're interested in primitive skills like the Adelal. Not everybody's as awesome as my buddy Ryan Gill over at Gill's Primitive. And so this is an Adelal dart and a thrower made out of modern material where if you did want to get into it, you could get a hold of this, learn the skill, and eventually upgrade very similar to how if you use a regular traditional bow made out of modern laminated materials, it takes away the barrier to entry as far as having to go out and make your own self bow to where you can acquire the skills to actually be proficient with the modern traditional bow and then actually go out and make your own traditional atlatls later. And I think that that's probably the concept behind it is taking something that is really old technology and making it more consumer friendly. Yep. Exactly. And so I'll let you take over from here. So this is our Addle Addle. This is a, a kit combo that you can purchase. So this is a composite handle, turkey feathers, and then dart system. And this dart system is basically a three piece system. It screws together just like a pool cue. So it makes it easier to transport. So you don't have a six foot dart trying to carry around in your truck. It's three pieces. So after you're done, either if you want to, you're hunting or you're wanting to just mess around in the backyard, throw out a target, have some buddies, hang out, whatever. This just screws very simply apart. So it's easy to take down, store, transport, whatever. We also have a piece of Velcro here. So when you're throwing it, it's easier to hold as it kind of takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but you can be surprised. It's just like when you're on a pitcher's mound throwing a pitch on how accurate you can be with this thing. And then on the end here, this is a standard size insert, so it will take any standard size field point or broadhead. One thing major to do is check with your local game agencies on whether it's legal to hunt with, but there has been cases, I believe a couple years ago, a 14-year-old killed a deer with an addle addle during uh, a specific season. Now, here's a personal question of mine, because when we're talking about larger game animals and such and weight and kinetic energy, could you theoretically, if you got more than one dart, extend this dart so that it had more weight, take this middle section out of one and then add it in and then put the other end in it? You could you could do that. Um, we've found well, the reason we made the dart this long is because we tested several different lengths and how we were going to retail this. And this was the most common, easiest way length we found that you could be accurate with. Okay, this, as far as system. just user friendly yep. and how I'd imagine it's just like anything else where if you watch an addle addle in slow motion, you get a wave exactly like the Archer's Paradox. So I'd imagine that there's some spine engineering in yep. why you made it this way. But I was just curious. I'd have to play around with it and see what way. And I'd imagine that you basically, if you did get this, it would be tuning just like anything else, figuring out what point weight you actually wanted to use yep. in it or anything. I think that it's super cool. And I think that it's weird. So thank you very much. Thank you, guys. So far, I'm pretty happy with how the show's turning out. I shouldn't seem so shocked about it. But remember, this is Tech Scrabner Outdoors, after all. So we'll see how the rest of the show goes. We're in the Lancaster booth. And you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of ILF, but it serves its purpose just not my preferred method what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for everybody and there's a whole bunch of different companies around here there's a whole bunch of different products around in this building right now because there's no right way of doing things with archery there are many correct ways of doing things with archery so even if it's a product that doesn't resonate with me that doesn't mean that it might not work for you because while there is no right way of doing things because it's archery 
there are many correct ways of doing things. So John, it's good to see you. This is our this is our best foot forward for the traditional bow hunting community. There's a lot involved with Galaxy, from target recurve archery to traditional bow hunting, and these are some of the ones that you know I put my head around to make into what a lot of traditional archers prefer. The Luna, Vega, and Ursa, they're all in the classic series. Um, the Luna is nice because it's a 64 inch AMO bow, so there's a lot of tall traditional archers, 6'2 and above, who have draw lengths of 31 inches, 32, 33 inches, and 60 and 62 inch recurves don't serve them well. No, they don't. But a 64 inch recurve feels unbelievably good to a long draw length archer. Now is this, be, even though it's still a 64 inch bow, mm -hmm. is it still measured in the draw weight at 28? 28, correct. Okay, so basically this one is 45. I'm gonna turn so that you can see this. 45 at 28. And so, I'm literally full you're, extension. You're, at that draw length, you're somewhere between 50 and 55 pounds because you add between two and three pounds for every inch. So if you're adding four inches there, you know, you're adding 12 pounds-ish to that bow. Now, I mean, I couldn't shoot from this draw length. Right. Obviously, because I'm tucked in behind right. there. At back here, there'd be no clear in my face. Shoot the side of your face off with the strength. Yeah, I mean, that's why I quit <laughs> using a kisser button back right. in the day when I started getting facial hair, because them uh, kisser buttons just would rip it out. So the neat thing about the three bows, Ursa, Luna, and Vega, is there's two shorter risers, and there's one longer riser, and there's two long limbs and one set of short limbs. This set of limbs, uh, taken off of this riser and put on this bow would make this a 62 inch bow um, and this set of limbs put on this riser would would also make this a 62 inch bow but that's a long set of limbs this is a medium set of limbs this is a long riser this is a medium riser and you can basically mix and match you can mix and match that's what's nice about these I mean overall for as far back as I drew that that this was a very impressive bow for, what's the price point on this? Just under $300, that one's about $280. Okay, so we're not down in, well okay, the golden, cause you know Dimitri has shot a sage forever. For a like time. the gold standard of cheapo traditional is the sage. Sage bow, absolutely. And so it's like, you're not necessarily in the sage price point, but eventually you're going to end up wearing a bow out. You know, you're eventually gonna outgrow or outshoot a sage to where the limbs aren't straight anymore or whatever. So then you're gonna wanna upgrade is what I'm getting yes, at. Yes, and it's not, and most of the time people upgrade, not because they've shot the bow out, but because the sage was a doorway into traditional archery, into traditional bow hunting, that you learn, you, you learn what the sport is, you learn what you like, you learn how to shoot a bow, and then you see that there's a lot more available and you begin seeking out a, a more closely matched bow for what you do yeah. once you've shot the sage. So you're probably not gonna shoot the sage out, you're probably gonna keep it for a friend or, or give it to somebody else or let somebody else shoot it with you, and you're going to start discovering new bows in archery, and that's what I like about this bow, is that under $300, maybe half the price of a custom bow, this is where a lot of people will start learning traditional bow hunting and traditional archery, and I love that about these bows. I don't think these take away any sales from custom bows. I think they only create more sales because once a person has shot a bow like this, in a few years they may end up ordering their own custom bows. Oh, absolutely. And I just think that it's a great product for the price point because they do look really slick. Like this here looks really slick with the black in there and yeah I mean I think for what you're actually paying for you're getting what you're paying for in because there isn't really a whole lot of frills you know I'm not a huge fan of the ILF yes 
I'm not a huge fan. The reason is we don't make ILF limbs for guys that hunt dinosaurs with their bows. Yes, so, but... Tex is a big guy, works out a lot, and he shoots bows that I would literally probably sprain my shoulder if I tried to shoot them. So I don't shoot bows as heavy as him, and I gravitate towards bows in the 40 to 50 pound range. And I don't make ILF limbs. I we don't know. make ILF limbs. Though. Nobody <laughs> does. Just for the hell of it. Where I come down on crossbows on a personal level is if somebody wants to use a crossbow, fine, use a crossbow. It's crossbow hunting. Yeah. Bow hunting is bow hunting. Crossbow hunting is crossbow hunting. Right. And if the Pope and Young doesn't want to keep records on crossbow kills, then crossbow hunters need to start their own record keeping association because it's, all hunting has its own difficulties, but when it comes to crossbows, it is a different animal. It's a different style of hunting that has its own challenges, its own issues. So I'm not a huge fan of crossbows, for people that are able-bodied people that don't have a need for it. But if it gets somebody in the woods and sells hunting licenses and whatever, that's fine. All right, so new to the market this year is the Cheap Shot 130 crossbow. And the nice thing about this crossbow is it has 130 pound draw weight on it. It's got a cocking mechanism, so you pull the crossbow out this way and draw it back to lock it into position. You don't need any cocking ropes or you don't have to put your foot through it or anything like that. And it's ready to go at 130 pound draw weight. We've shot the 15 inch bolts that come with it at 240 feet per second. The box says 224, but when you use the actual 15 inch bolt, it's 240. And you can swap out the tips with broadheads so that you can hunt with this thing. It's so it, it's not only a toy, it's also a hunting crossbow. We've shot everything up to the size of a white-tailed deer with this thing. It comes with uh, six crossbow bolts. They're 15 inches long, like I said. Another feature about this crossbow that's really cool is to take it into the field, you just pop the pins out like this. The stock is removable. The prod is also removable. So this thing breaks down into the size small enough to fit into your backpack. Along with six bolts, you're inside your backpack, you take it out in the field. Once you get in the field, it's as easy as you saw me take it apart, it's that easy to put it back together. Slide your prod back in, close the pin, put the stock back in. Pins in there. Slide the stock in, clamp your pin, Cock your crossbow, you're ready to go. The Cheap Shot 130 by Cold Steel. Retails at $279.99. Now, where should I hold it so that it doesn't come I, shut I actually on? hold all the way to here. All the so way to max, here. max leverage, and just slam it on in. Here's your bolt, and it'll go automatically on safety. So what you want to do is you want to feed that uh, through this little yeah. safety ring over there. So it's on safety, and you just got to push that forward, and you're ready to go. I figure I did pretty all right. Yeah. What comes to mind is what I like about it is that it's not as god awful front heavy as a lot of other crossbows. Just from the standpoint of, I hate to use the word gimmick, just for the fact of, okay, it's a compact Whoa. crossbow, damn it if it ain't just cool. I had a uh, Wilderness Outfitters pocket hunter that I put spear gun bands on mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. And so, we'll see how this works out. What kind of pull are we getting out of these bands? Uh, Weight-wise, yeah. you're around 30. You can shorten them up about an inch and a half on both sides and get about 45 out of it. It's definitely a little bit different than the Pathfinder Stores Pocket Hunter that I had years ago that I put spear gun bands on, but 
It's a cool product. Don't really know how I feel about it other than it seems like a really expensive gimmick. But it could be a heck of a lot of fun if I actually had one. Of course, what's funny is I basically got into traditional archery because I needed to use up, have a reason to use up all my pocket hunter arrows that I made. So skinny. I didn't even know how it works. It reminds me of those skinny little arrows that I had as a kid, but I know that these are much more quality and much more expensive. But this is just so crazy thin diameter. So we're here in the Victory booth, and Victory makes Grizzly Stick, which is what I shoot, but what have we got here in the Victory booth? We got a couple of them, actually. Two were new for last year, and I'll go over those. They're kind of be a hot seller, um, they still are. And then we got one target arrow. Um, they kind of uh, play off the Grizzly Stick with a tapered shaft. So the first one we have, which you like, the traditional stuff, it's actually a carbon trad. It's a wood veneer that is laid over top of carbon. So it's a nostalgia. So the guys like the wood, some guys like carbon. Well, guess what? We got both. So it's actually real wood veneer. I mean, it cuts. You can smell it um, when it's cut. Um, so it's wood veneer over the top of the carbon. It's got the, you know, the dependability of carbon, but you still got that cool wood look. It's just not a wood grain thrown on there, so it's rubbed off or scratched off. Um, it's durable. Um, you could scratch a fletching off vein, refletch, and you're not going to be gouge marks in there. So um, that's always one of our cool arrows for the guys shoot long bow recurve, like you know I do and you do as well. Um, another arrow that was a hot one last year was the extortion. Now for guys that like weight, momentum, the extortion was something we did, um, and it's never been done before. It actually involves a 303 stainless steel mesh interwoven into the carbon. So it actually has stainless steel. So it's carbon, stainless, carbon, stainless, carbon. So it's different layers of carbon and stainless. It cuts just like a carbon arrow, but it's got the stainless steel mesh in there. So it's allowed to bend and actually not take a set like other arrows out there on the market. So you hit something hard with it, it's not gonna bend. Um, you can see here. So I can take it, take it bend, and it's still straight, so it's not taking a set up. So it's well. different than like an FMJ where the aluminum's really durable, but it will bend. And it will if bend, you and, and it'll stay bent. And, and it done. stays. So therefore, it's still, still got the, the carbon where it can take the beading and not stay bent. And the stainless is still giving it this weight and rigidity. So, and as you can tell, it's pretty heavy. 12.8 um, grains an inch just in the 400 spine itself. So, um, 350 is a little bit heavier. And it does feel very sturdy, like I'm. I yeah, don't want to just... have to take it. Devin, um, on their product testing trip, actually ran two of them through a hog, or uh, maybe one or two different arrows through the hog, straight through the hog, came out, washed it off, and it was good. You know how... Oh, yeah, dirt, I yeah. mean... Hogs are... Hogs they are, are durable animals, and the grizzly sticks that I've got through Victory have been very durable. Yeah, yep. And so, yep. I mean... And it's the same... uses the same TKO low torque weave. Um, on that arrow like we do on the grizzly sticks. That low torque weave, what it is, it's a, a 90 degree weave that actually lays over the carbon. And when you, it, it helps the arrow recover faster. And what I say, and um, I kind of relate it to people as, as the arrow is starting to flex in the air, those that, it's like a steel fence. Um, and it keeps that arrow from wanting to go so far out of that paradox and then retract back. It actually helps it stabilize a lot faster. It's keeping it in this much instead of this much on that paradox. It's allowing it to only hit a certain spot, hit a certain spot, and then come back. It's still the right spine, but it's keeping it from paradoxing so fast, okay? And it's, uh, it, it, that shaft, I mean, it's for a guy who likes heavy, 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 um, guys that are maybe bow hunters 45 yards and in, um, guys are going to like that shaft. So. Oh shoot, I like mine under 20 yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so the guys like, just guys like heavy. Um, you want to get that pin gap out of there, you can get it with that one. You're out there for about 45 yards. And then some guys have got maybe a little bit higher peak sight, um, they can get up a little bit, you know, get a little bit further distance out with that heavy arrow. So, and so a tournament side here? of things. Now this is, a, this is something that's not been done. Um, by us before, it's but we kind of took it from Grizzly Stick. It's a tapered shaft in a 166. Okay, so this is called our VXT. 
Victory Extreme Taper. Um, we're offering this in three sizes, the 1,000th, 3,000th, and a 6,000th. Um, it's 230 outside diameter here and 207 here. Now that can fluctuate depending on spine. And what that gives you, you can cut it off up to four inches either way, and we have a spine chart, and it'll be available at victoryarchery.com. And as you cut, it will change the spine depending on if you cut from the front or cut from the rear. So, and what this does for guys that are shooting recurve, it allows that tail to get away from a little bit from the riser a little bit and then recover faster. But what it also does for guys that like to shoot long range, like 100, you know, 120 yards, and they're worried about bottoming out their sight, it's got FOC kind of built in already with that taper. So you're not having to add 150, 140, you know, 130 grains. You can run 80 to 100, 110 in the front and still keep your FOC up. It makes the arrow a little bit lighter so you can still get those, you know, longer yardages out of your sights, if that makes sense. So cool. people like my wife who can bottom out at 70 yards is now getting that extra 10 to 20 yards on a setup. So that makes sense. Now, just for the record, just because you can shoot that far does not mean yeah. shoot animals And a lot of this far. stuff is for, like, Reading-style tournament where yeah, Bigfoot's at 101 and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and just goofing off. But we don't recommend, if you don't feel safe doing it, don't do it, you know? So, and everything is spine aligned. Everything has got a mark where the stiff side is, stiff side is marked, and we met your, uh, mark our cock vein there. So, in all our arrows. So. Yeah, pretty much it. Pretty cool. Thank you yeah. very much. Hey, appreciate it, Tex. Thanks, guys. Happy ATA. Show. All right, keep it up. Very comfy seats. Ooh, dog bed. <laughs> I'm shockingly surprised at how much fun that I actually am having this year because normally the ATA show is a huge stress fest, and I think that I finally accepted the fact that. I really just don't care. I'm here on vacation and to see folks. And instantly, it's almost like the acceptance of death making you stop fearing it. I just don't care anymore. I get to have fun. <laughs> it's probably the only way that I'm actually gonna get that deer is buying that target. The deer mounted on the wall plaque is just hilarious to me. Granted, cheap taxidermy. I don't want to think about how many people have done this today, but I just want to see how it actually feels next to skin. And I don't know how other than trying it on, how to do it, but yes, I literally just rubbed my face on this Cryptek shirt. So, I mean, technically, if I peed on it, it would be mine already, but not really. I'd still have to pay for it, and they'd probably throw me out of the show. But here I am in the Cryptek booth, wearing my Sun's Out, Guns Out Cryptek vest here, and yeah. It's pretty soft. I wish I had this shit in Oklahoma. Of course, it's not like I didn't have $500 with a first light sitting at my house in Oklahoma either. I'm all about it. So I'm in the Martin booth here, and here I've got a Martin Mamba. I don't actually own a Mamba, but the Mamba is basically like my Martin Hunter, but shrunk down a little bit. And I really like this smoky riser color that they've got going on here. Even though I do love the more traditional riser color that I have on my Martin Hunter, Final arrow, I'm gonna try and shoot the buck in the eye. Not quite. Okay, I lied. 
Now that I've got a goal in my head, we'll see if I can do it the second try. Nope, but I knocked feathers off. I'd better quit while I'm ahead and still welcome. I do really like, and I think that it's beautiful, this Martin Mamba in the black wood. Material-wise, of what might be going into the bow limbs. The designs of these bows haven't changed in years and years. I'm not gonna say an exact year number. I am a fan of the riser finish and the black limbs, even though on my Martin Hunter back home, I'm all scratched up and got plenty of character. Spider bow, 62 inch overall length, available in 20 to 60 pounds. Uh, the biggest difference that you'll notice over the Samick Sage is uh, one, uh, I'm, a, I'm a smaller guy, my stature, I have smaller hands. So the biggest thing that I focused on primarily was uh, the throat and the grip and making sure it's much more comfortable in smaller hands for women's youth and stuff like that. Uh, we also got rid of the front face edge. There's a real flat front face edge on a Samick, so we kind of shaved that down, made it a much more ergonomical feel in your hand and then touched a lot on the limb pockets. The limb pockets on a Sage are square. They have a sharp edge on the side of them. From a retailer's perspective, because I have a retail store as well, I noticed a lot of consumers were having issues with Sages in the corners of the limb pockets bumping things and bending or cracking, and then they were having limb fitment issues. I resolved the problem by tapering the limb pocket down to avoid any damage to that spot. Um, the other big differentiation that you will notice between Southwest Archery and Samick that separates ourselves from basically any other company out there is the fact that every single one of my bows has a serial number on it. That serial number is important for two reasons. One, that allows me to offer a one-year manufacturer warranty on my product. And two, I can use that serial number with the proprietary software that I've developed for my business that basically tracks my products and the price point of my products across multiple marketplaces such as Amazon, eBay, Walmart, Jet, as well as all of my authorized dealers' websites. The reason that's relevant is because you won't find my bow below map, basically. It's going to be the same price point no matter where you're shopping for it. Um, the, uh, I'm, and then I also touch base on the warranty. Um, the other big thing about our bows is all of our limb tips are reinforced, so they're all fast flight and Flemish string compatible. Um, Basically, as I mentioned, this was the first entry bow that we came out with when we started Southwest Archery about four years ago, and I have sold thousands of these bows. Um, in my retail shop, we have a large JOAD program, which is the Junior Olympic Archers. Um, so with that being said, I was really interested in divine, de developing a, a youth line for our products, and that is kind of where these Tiger bows were born. Basically, you have a 48-inch, 14 pounds left and right-handed. It's a cute, tiny little recurve bow and then you have a 54 inch in left and right handed from 16 to 29 pounds. Um, the kind of the development of my brand, the way it came is that this material wood, this is all naturally sourced handcrafted materials, um, no lamination, this is just how the wood looks. It's the crazy stuff. You chop the tree down and it literally looks like this, it's gnarly. So I was like, wow, I love this wood. Um, I wanted to like start using, making my bows out of it. Well, the only kicker is this material is very soft. Um, so you notice like in this particular bow, it has the, uh, the oak in the riser. That oak is the integrity and the backbone of that particular riser and that's how you're able to get uh, the heavier draw weights out of it. So my problem that I ran into with these bows is I developed these for a, as a youth line, but I had adults contacting me saying, man, I really love they look this wicked bow, cool. but I want to hunt big game with it. How do I get into the heavier draw weights? So, hold this for me, my man. Basically, those two bows in your hand, I breeded together, and that's how this bad boy was born. So now you have a Southwest Archery Tiger Shark Pro with the tiger wood that's super soft, however, it's inlaid with the oak. So this particular bow is available in 25 to 60 pounds now. I also went ahead and uh, blacked out the limbs. So these are still maple limbs, just like you can see the exposed maple on these two bows. However, uh, we blacked it out and tapered down the limb to follow the line of the riser, blacked out the bushings to match the limbs, and added a shelf pad. And basically, you have this monstrosity of a bow that's available left and right-handed, 20 to 60 pounds. Price point on this bow is $149. You will not find a bow for this price in this shape 
at that price point. Yeah, trust me. I'm. You can send it right. Yeah, at 60 pounds, you'll send it through a shoulder blade. It's, this is an awesome package right here. Um, turn that around so that they can see the arrow shelf, though. Because this is impressive to me. Because one of my claims to fame is Shoot finding. Some well, finding cheap ass bows to get people shooting. God, you're arrows. talking to that company then. And so, yeah, I mean, Absolutely. I'm glad to have found you. Yeah. And it's funny, I'm pretty sure that uh, I actually have one of your bows. Yeah, that'd be so my, ironic. My, isn't it? Well, no, I mean, I'm pretty sure yeah. I've got one of your bows right in my Amazon cart right now, waiting until I yeah. get paid to where I can afford to buy right it, because I live in real life like the rest I of everybody exactly. else. Exactly, I hear you. you I know? hear you. And exactly. so I appreciate what you're doing. Definitely. We're here to provide a high-quality bow at an affordable price, and then we support that product with our manufacturer warranty, which gives you one year of protection from any defect, whether it be a limp twist or a delamination or anything of that nature. You can just contact us directly. All of our customer service is here in the United States, which is rare. We're all here in the United States. Our warranty is here in the United States. Give us a call. Within one year date of purchase, I will replace that product. No questions asked. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you guys. And we'll see what we can do about maybe doing business Definitely, with each other. Man, because this is, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy. It just it has, has to, to work. work. That's it, baby. I like it. I'm here at the Northern Broadheads booth at the ATA, and I've got Adam here. And he's going to talk about these broadheads because I'm a traditional bow hunter, and his product seems very well suited to traditional bow hunting. So take it away, Adam. All right. Tell me what you got going on here. So our range starts with the 100 grain. He's got a uh, aluminum ferrule and a stainless blade. The 125 grain, he's an inch cut, sorry, the, the 100 grain's an inch cut. And everything from, from the 125 up is an inch and a quarter. Uh, the 125's got an aluminum ferrule, stainless blade. And then the 150, the 175, the 200 in single and double bevel have all got a solid steel ferrule, which is this guy here. And they're all inch and a quarter cut. We do the 200 grain in a, in a single bevel, left to right. So for the guys that do right wing, like most of us in Australia do right, so we cut it right. And there's a lot of guys in the US that do left, so we cut them left as well. Hot off the press, we've got a brand new CNC one piece solid steel Teflon powder coated uh, head, and they're done in 125, 150, 175, and 200 grain. They'll come in a box of three, scalpel sharp. They'll be available probably within the month, so it's brand new, that's only a week old. And then for our arrows, a traditional. We've got a, um, a micro diameter, so 4.2 millimeter inside. We've done it in a timber finish, something different, probably because I'm a trad hunter and they look better than just black. Um, super heavy GPI, the 400 spine run at 10.3 GPI. The 350 spine runs at uh, 11 grains per inch and the 300 spine runs at 12 grains per inch. We also do a 500 and 600 GPI, uh, sorry, spine and we do a 250 as well. So we've got the whole family covered with arrows. Um, and then we use a 120 grain stainless steel insert, or we've got a 30 grain aluminum, the same as that, depending on weight. So that's pretty much the whole, the whole range. And obviously this right here, the water buffalo, I have delusions of grandeur, so I hunt whitetail here in the States with water buffalo tackle. Nice. So maybe one of these days I'll make a little bit of money and we'll go walk about. Come Thank down, you very much for your time. Yeah, no problem. And where can they find you at to okay. order these? So at the moment, Three Rivers Archery stock our whole range, um, TP Outdoors as well, and from this show we've, we've met a lot of awesome store owners, so I would imagine in the near future it's going to be quite widespread. Awesome, because if you use the code of Tex Grebner at your checkout at Three Rivers Archery, you can get these Northern Broadheads at a discount from Three Rivers Archery in your coupon code at the end for some free shipping. And so at least that works with what, what I've got going on. Yeah, that's cool. So fantastic. Sweet. Thank you again.
So this is something that I've never actually seen before. And I'm here with stacked outdoors. And for all the public land hunters, <laughs> in the east because we don't really have a whole lot of public land and in illinois where i'm from you basically have to bring everything in and take everything out every time that you go into the forestry yeah. portion it's a logistical nightmare and so this is something that i think would be very useful and so tell me a little bit about what we've got going on here on this here table. I, as a bow hunter, and like a lot of others, have had piles of the ladder, ladder sticks made of metal, and the, the longer, shorter, they got straps going everywhere, and you end up with a pile of sticks you can't sort one out of. So I wanted to make something that's stacked like solo cups. And this is actually, a, this is five sets right here. That's five sets that take up maybe two square feet, the corner of your shop, the back of your truck. One big advantage of these, you can see we've got the strap post uh, positioned just above center. So if you grab these from below, unlike a lot of the other sticks in the past, this position is a lot higher percentage-wise on some of the competitors. So you grab that bottom stick and it can come off. So, but anyway, I mean, you get up here and you can see they're solid as a rock and actually these will actually mold and adapt to the tree just a little bit you can't see them flex but when you step on it these 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 arms will actually dig into the tree and hold on so they actually uh, they'll adapt to the tree yeah that's cool so what's the uh, what is the actual material of this it's a high strength highly reinforced nylon material it's uh it is full of reinforcement. If you think of concrete and rebar, each stick weighs, weighs 2.34 pounds. A set of four weighs nine and a half. And um, yeah, you know, another big advantage, you got steps on both sides. It gets dark, you're climbing out of the tree, you don't have to guess which side to step on. There, you've, got, you've got steps on both sides. So keep you safe. Uh, they're easy to keep nice and compact in a good little, uh, compact position and they don't take up a whole lot of room and they're uh well, it's i think that it seems super lightweight and it seems really innovative now i mean as far as safety and durability goes what are we looking at i mean this is just for my own curiosity yeah. like what are we looking at as far as what they're rated for how heavy could you get they're rated at 300 pounds oh okay, so basically an industry standard yeah, yeah, as, far, about, as far as i know everything that's there's a couple out like there that the are golden standard i'd say it's probably know, average about yeah. 300 and, and uh, we've we've passed all the tests that tma makes you makes you go through uh, everything they recognize we've uh, we've met all their standards um yeah 300 pounds is the is the, the rated capacity i mean they'll They've passed tests that put a lot more load on them than that. The only thing like that comes to mind for me, just thinking about it, because I'm a kind of guy that anything will go wrong for, right. is the cold weather durability, because yep. a lot of things get really brittle when yeah. it's cold. With all the reinforcement in the material, okay, they actually get stronger down to minus 40 degrees. Okay. So they react positively to cold weather okay I mean, good to know we, it's just yeah, something yeah. that when yeah. we're dealing with something that's not metal and not and, something you're used to and not yeah. something that i'm used to yeah. i feel like it's a question that bear is asking because yeah. you know you don't want to get out there and end up stepping on it absolutely and break it off when it's you know really cold outside yeah. because traditionally speaking Plastic gets brittle in the cold, yeah. and I don't. I know this isn't necessarily a plastic product, yeah. but that's the mental association yeah. that a lot of people would have. Yeah. Well, you know how they called Glocks plastic guns for years, that's right. you know, that's right. even if, uh, though it was polymer. So, what did you say the uh, retail on these was going to be? One seventy nine. Yep, for a set of four with a shoulder strap included. And. Uh, I think that it's a super, really innovative product. For sure. To be on, I like, honestly, I'm kind of starstruck by it just because you've got something that's great here. Well, you get it out of the box and there is zero assembly. There are no moving parts. Um, 
they're solid. Like as long as it's solid and as long as it's safe and as long as it's durable, I figure that I'd like to see it as a consumer, I would like to see the price point come down closer to $100 or more sticks in there as a consumer. But as a new product, yeah. I don't expect We're working that. On that. But it's, you know, they are made in America, which, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the competitors are having some, some of their components, you know, if not the whole, the whole product right. made overseas. Now, I could do that and get them done cheaper, but when somebody's life's relying on it, I want something made in America. You know, it's, well, especially uh, a plant, a, a non-metal. You can, because we've all gotten away, and I'm truthful about it. We've all gotten away with hunting out a very cheap Chinese oh, yeah. Menards brand kind right. of tree stands. That's what I'm in right now. Yeah. Metal's metal, and these being not metal but made in America. At that point, yeah, I do care yeah. that it's made in America and, being, and not being metal. Right. And being mobile as they are, you're not going to need to go buy five to ten sets of these. These, these are the ones you, yeah, can you keep can, with you. You find another spot you want to jump in, and, and you can get there in a hurry. And, you know, you, you, one or two sets, you're going to Because let's concerned. face it, you always get up there, right, and you sit there for about five minutes, and you think, son of a bitch. I, that tree would be a great stand because you get up there and it's almost like you're scouting from your tree stand because you can see the paths cut once you get above the ground where you can see where the deers are moving. Absolutely. So anyways, I really appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you, Tex. Thank you very much. Well, you know, the good news is I haven't actually spent any money this entire show other than paying for the parking. So prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. charismatic all you got to do is actually talk about the product don't worry so we're here in the Oneida booth I am a recurve shooter as you guys well know but there is just a cool factor to an Oneida where it's almost like a steampunk bow but I'm gonna turn it over to you and you tell me what's going on because back when I was a kid Oneidas weren't the greatest they were loud they had a lot of vibration in them in the limbs and you basically had to stack foam underneath of here to make yeah. it sound lighter than a 22 short yeah. so you tell me what the company is doing now all right and then i'll see if i can't oblige you and manage to robin hood and arrow with this <laughs> okay. thing this is our new phoenix they make them in a 30 to 50 and a 50 to 70. we quieten them down a lot with our new dampening system on these it really Cut out that noise and vibration on them, so they're a lot quieter than they used to be. And uh, that's it on our Phoenix and on our Osprey right here. Not much has changed. We got a little bit thicker grip on these, so uh, when you're on the boat throwing them around, fish don't yank it out of your hands on there. And uh, that's pretty much it on these. I'm gonna let Tex, uh, Tex try one of these out real quick, and he's gonna give it a shot, see what he thinks. Well, we'll see. I'm gonna go for the top target of the one that's on the left. It is really weird being a recurve shooter. Yeah. And I've got my fingers on the string and then all of a sudden I break those limbs yeah, over that, and it goes. It hit that let off mod. <laughs> It is dangerous to release too much of my awesomeness all at once. Well, at least I'm still in the blue. I like it a lot more than I think that I would because the brand has come a long way from what it has been. And there is just something really unique about the look and the style of an Oneida. It's kind of like the question that nobody really asked. Well, that one was pretty good. Well, I shook the air. I didn't rob and hit yeah. it yet. Rattled it. Well, I do really like the Phoenix, and it is substantially quieter than the Oneidas used to be. And it just, they're just cool. I don't know how else to say it. They have a cool look, and 
while I like bow fishing with my recurves, I know that these are big, big for tournament bow fishing because yeah. you can just hold them back and they're simple. Yep. You don't have a lot to get your bow fishing line wrapped up in. Snap shooting. But I also, you know, if I ever got bored of traditional, I would probably do what Tim did and Tim Wells, that is, and go with an Oneida because they have sure come a hell of a long way from where they have been. For a set of arrows, you'd think that they were shipping them out packed with cocaine on the inside <laughs> for how much, like. Yeah, they're not cheap. They're, they're not cheap. cheap. Hi guys, I'm Dusty from Striker Bows. I'm gonna show you our 2019 bow lineup. Uh, for this year, we are introducing a 16 inch riser. So in the past, we've always had our 60 inch uh, classic TDR and 60 inch sport TDR. And now we're introducing, uh, which both those are at 60 inches. This year we're introducing a 16 inch riser, which makes the bow 62 inches. It's a little bit bigger grip, a little bit more traditional style. So it's got a little more palm swell in it, a little bit more in the throat. And we got that in the, this is the sport TDR. Then we've also got it in the classic. And the cool thing about uh, this system is that they're interchangeable. So you can interchange the 14 with the 16 to go from a 60 inch to a 62 inch and they only have a two pound difference so a 45 is still going to stay in that range even if you go up in in uh in length and the new for 2019 as well we're introducing a 62 inch classic it's got an 18 inch riser and again a little bit bigger in the palm and the throat for that bow um, which has been requested a lot we've been asked a lot about a 62 inch bow and and we're happy to, uh, to roll it out this year. And another new addition is the Sport, which has always been a 58 inch. We moved up to a 60 inch uh, length, which also has been a pretty big request. Uh, so we're super excited about those. Also, any of the risers can interchange with our RK1, which is our aluminum riser. Uh, we've kept everything the same on this bow. It's done really well, and, and uh, we decided to keep everything the same with that, so it's a 16 inch riser and uh, you can interchange these limbs with, with any of the wood setups. Um, also, uh, the price the price on the classic and sport TDRs have dropped to $7.99 for 2019, so we're super excited about that. And obviously, as always, we have all of our custom shop stuff. For example, our Fastback, this is an example of our of our uh, custom shop. This is Coca Bowl on the limbs there with black and white ebony. And then it's got black and white ebony in the back. This has been a, uh, a staple in our, in our lineup. And uh, those are all interchangeable between longbow and recurve limbs, as well as the, actually the custom, or not the custom, sorry, the classic and sport takedowns are interchangeable between recurve and longbow limbs. So super excited about those. Make a video shooting in the booth with the new. Uh Bigger handles? Yeah. Handles. We can do a 45 recurve. I'll manage. You didn't get that none too good crimp there. Super skinny arrow. Shoot that cat. They're just so darn skinny. I'm sure they work. Right. I'm sure they're durable. My first thought is though, that they're just super skinny. It's like shockingly skinny. Like I'm putting my finger up here and it's like, it takes forever for it to get yeah. there because they're so darn skinny. But I'm sure they work. I just love and I hate that sound of well, yeah, when you're paying for them, you when you're them. paying for them, you hate them. Well, I mean, it looks good for your bow. It sure does. Yeah, you shoot it well. That's a dead cat. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode of Tech Scrab Near Outdoors here at the Archery Trade Association show for 2019. It has been quite the adventure. Here's hoping that it doesn't turn into a misadventure and we die in a snowstorm on the way home because basically. This year, everything was going pretty well for the ATA show. 
As always, God bless all my sports in America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please come, my friends, over at ThreeRiversArchery.com. Thank you very much to those who are involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching Tech Scrabbing Your Outdoors.